What is up guys? Welcome to another Vidiani. In this video, we're gonna break down Cat Williams on the Joe Rogan podcast. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into today's video. <sighs> if I'm being honest, it was a little bit boring. I saw a little bit of the interview, not all of it. What if we find out that we're aliens? Right. <laughs> uh, I'm not qualified to be having any of this conversation. What do you think ghosts are? You think that's I, real? Why do black people like menthol so much? Mm. What's up? There was a lot of awkward pauses in this interview, if I'm being honest. What about? Let's just God, damn, we got to talk about weed, cat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This must be the weed I'm trying talk. to figure out how to jump in on that. All righty. If you missed the latest episode of JRE with Cat Williams, now you're up to speed. Mm. That 30-second intro summarizes the whole three-hour conversation. And what better way to make an entrance back onto YouTube than with a classic JRE episode? It was basically a Joe Rogan classic hits album with all of his favorite talking points. Mm. Aliens, black people, pyramids, space travel, <laughs> World Economic Forum, universal basic income, social credit scores. Black people. Jesus, that's funny. Elon's a superhero and uh. TikTok is bad. Oh, oh God. and don't drink the tap water. Mm. Rogan pulled out his full bag of tricks to keep Cat Williams entertained and it has people divided. I get it, I understand his back and all of that, but bruh, like, I tried watching it. I went, I was three minutes in and then I was just like, bruh, I can't, bruh. They had these like long, awkward pauses and they were just like, it's almost like two comedians which don't really know each other. So they're trying to like, kind of like figure out who is this person? Because I think that Joe Rogan does fear Cat Williams a little bit because of what he said on the Shannon Sharp, uh, not podcast, but the Shannon Sharp show. So I think there's a little fear there and a little mutual respect, but uh, that's what I felt. I felt like they weren't really clicking. Instead of taking his guests through his morning routine of ice baths, saunas, kettlebell swings, and TRT, mm. there was no talk of elk meat, stem cell injections, or mm. bows and arrows. But whichever camp you fall into, stay tuned because I'm going to take you through a couple of disagreements they had, which for me was refreshing, okay. considering how JRE has basically turned into a rotation of Rogan's buddies sitting around and agreeing with everything he says. So if you're new here and you end up enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button and become a subscriber so you can join my 115,000. I will definitely like this video. Let's just go in there and then let's press the like button, of course and strong regulars and get all my uploads right there in your feed there's maybe 500 of us on the planet you know you got to be real generous and say 500 because it's really probably about 250 right but legit comics your guys who your you numbers recommend, going down your numbers going down, your numbers going down. <laughs> So if you're wondering how we got here, over a month ago, Cat Williams appeared on Shannon Sharp's podcast, which now has over 60 million views on YouTube, which is more than Rogan's most viewed podcasts. On that podcast, Cat was dropping truth bombs left, right, and center, which included calling out Rogan for pushing unfunny comedians on JRE. That's okay. how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist that would be like me being on joe rogan joe don't want me on there i need to be on <laughs> shannon joe joe got six comedians that never been funny he want to push out <laughs> <laughs> but that's really how it is and so Rogan did the mature thing and posted on Twitter about how much he likes and respects Cat Williams and handed him an open invitation to come on the podcast. Mission accomplished. So here we are then a couple of weeks after Rogan announced his new Spotify deal, which included a broader distribution onto other platforms, including YouTube. Yeah, but honestly, if you really think of it, that move was genius from Joe. Because yes, shots were fired, but then Joe just handled it like a gentleman. And also, think of how much money he's going to be making off of this. Three hours long. But the interview is almost at, what, 4 million? So it might hit 10. I don't think it's going to do as much as Shannon's did. 
but I think he's going to be around 10 because there was nothing really interesting, nothing really controversial, which they discussed. So I'm like, yeah, it might land at around 10 million views. But then again, I could be wrong. YouTube instead of just Spotify. And in an effort to make a big entrance back onto YouTube, Spotify released the first episode with mm. Cat Williams, which has gone very well, reaching 1 million views within the first few hours. But as for this episode itself, there was no mention of Cat calling out Rogan. They barely even spoke about comedians, except for a couple of minutes at the very beginning. So it was clearly all very friendly and respectful. My personal view is that Cat Williams played Rogan like a fiddle and put him in a tight position. It was clear on the podcast with Shannon Sharp that he was fishing for viral moments. You could tell by the smirk on his face every time he dropped a bomb. And then judging by how civil the conversation was with Rogan once he got onto JRE, it felt like his goal all along was to get Rogan's attention, ending up with an open invite. Now, I've previously said that Rogan didn't really have a choice. He had to play the good guy and downplay any brewing beef between Cat and Rogan's comedy circle. So strategically, Joe kind of had to invite him on to keep the peace. Plus, Rogan generally speaks positively about Cat and clearly respects him as a comedian and as an entertainer. But that didn't stop Rogan basically laughing in Cat's face when he brought up the number of books he read as a child. In a nutshell, if you haven't already heard, Cat Williams previously claimed that he's read thousands and thousands of books in a four-year period. Yeah, apparently 2,000 books. Read when he was a kid, which clearly invited a bunch of ridicule because of how far-fetched it sounds. So when he brought it up with Rogan, well, he didn't seem like he was convinced either. And how do you think Elon Musk really feels? Like, I don't think he's going to tell you. No, I'm saying in his head. Can he still have a superhero or is he one of them? Ooh. You know he's one of them. The more you know, the more you know how little you know. That's so true too. There's not a, you know what I mean? And yeah, that's, that's something that I also say all the time. I, I have this quote where I say, I know enough to know that I know nothing at all. As ownership of information. Like when I, when I said like, you know, I read 3,000 books, people were like, <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, from the time I was eight to the time I was 12, um, I never celebrated any birthdays. I never went to a birthday party. I never had a Thanksgiving, a Christmas. I never trick or treated. I wasn't allowed to watch movies hmm. and I wasn't allowed to watch TV. Um, all I could do was read for eight oh. hours a day. <laughs> I got eight hours and I can read and I love to read. And so I'm reading books that are 200. But is that so far fetched to say reading 3000 books, 2000, uh, that's a lot of books. But as a kid, if you love to read, like I remember I used to love to play PlayStation. So I'd play so many games. It's not the same thing as reading, but you probably could. 150 to 100 pages and leave it in the comment section guys how many books have you guys read because i am not so much of a reader i used to read a lot before when i was in school then i read some books but in total i'm maybe at can i say 200 books maybe 100 books like i hate reading i think it's super boring and it takes me about an hour to read one. Mm. All I'm doing is reading because that's what... So I'm, I'm checking out 20 books. The limit at the library is 20 books at one time. So I'm going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So you're getting 60 books a week? Ab minimum. Because Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm reading more than that because I still have religious books that I have to read. So under, un you... understand this is pre-internet first. Right. So... The numbers aren't even really accurate because I read more than that because like sometimes <laughs> sometimes I would read something and I wouldn't get it. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps going with that story. I mean, if you do basic math, he'd have to have been reading around 100 to 150 pages per hour at the age of 8 to 12 years old. Yeah, I don't know about that one. And even Theo Vaughn and Shane Gillis were having a laugh about it a few weeks ago on Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. Free cat, baby. That's <laughs> where I'm at with it, dude.
Alvo right, Kat you know what would be crazy, guys, to see Theo Vaughn and Cat Williams in an interview together. I think they would be able to make the craziest content because Theo is like, he's almost like his style is he wings a lot of, you know, he makes up a lot of, he has these like stories and he's like, Theo Vaughn, this guy, I swear, would be the perfect, perfect co pilot on a, uh, on a podcast. It in right now, bro. Ooh. <laughs> That's, good. That's what we That'd need, good, dude. dude. We could use it. We need a real f brother in there, bro. True. Or cat. The interview was, it was fun to watch, but then you'd like, he would just make these claims that were just like, sub dude. 4 3 40. Sub 4 3. That got me. 3,000 books a year. <laughs> that's 100 a week it's crazy that's like medical he must be including like medical pamphlets dude there's no way Three thousand books a year that's how much he said he could read he said that's how much he said he, he, said he was from reading age a year. seven to twelve or something he read three thousand books a year hmm. but the rest of the podcast was mostly cat pulling up rogan on his outlandish theories see this is why this episode was so strange because at times it felt like two teenage boys mm. exchanging random stories they concocted True. with their teenage boy imaginations however like i said at the beginning of this video one thing i like about cat is that he's disagreeable and he won't agree with you just to make the conversation flow better and that's why i think there were so many awkward silences throughout the podcast True. because joe's so used to people just agreeing with him or laughing when he says something silly Whereas Cat would just sit there and stop. Yeah, Joe is used to guys getting on their knees. For a moment while he really thought about what he's going to say. So even though he's got some whack theories himself, it's nice to see what a genuine conversation looks like on JRE after all this time. It reminded me of when Elon goes onto the podcast. There are so many of those awkward silences when Elon stops and really thinks about what he wants to say. And this episode had that same vibe in a way. When Rogan got into the alien talk, surprisingly, Kat actually called him out for being so eager to believe the stories people put out there about UFO sightings mm. and then proceeded to fact check Rogan about the Chinese balloons right before Jamie did. Now, I've covered so many examples of Rogan just making stuff up over the years or mm. reading a headline to an article without reading the article itself and then waffling on about what he thinks instead of just reading the stupid article. There are countless examples of Rogan saying things that are straight up factually incorrect and he receives almost no pushback. But this time was different. Cat, in his signature style, basically just said, that's not true and it was refreshing. Life would change forever if you had undeniable contact with something. If, it would just change forever. Your perception of light, you, you, just to drive through the in and out drive through would be different. Everything would be different. You could say that about smelling salts or, <laughs> or mushrooms. I have good friends that have had experiences that they say there is no f***ing way that that is us, that this is something else. Right, just understand that part of the job in any of these circumstances is to kick up kerfuffle. Like, right. that's part of it. Like, as advanced as we are, we still got to let that balloon fly over, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's your neighbor peeking over the fence. No, it is not. <laughs> it is your neighbor's drone. Yeah, your neighbor's drone. In your Probably yard. Over your house. Yeah. Right. Ridiculous, bro. They just flew those things over and they hoped that Biden didn't notice. They said they flew over during Trump's administration too, but they didn't tell him because they didn't want him to shoot him down. Neither of those stories is true. That information was out was there. One, like two, three years right. Ago, right. Another one, yeah. They said this was a hobbyist, though. But oh, what? oh man, I love how confident Rogan is about stuff he clearly knows nothing about. And Kat did a pretty good job of steering him away from his boomer talking points. You know how Joe waffles on and on about how we all just need to love each other and how modern day society is... Yeah, but this is the problem with podcasting. I said this a while back. I said that podcasting is going to replace music, and it has. And now I think my, my next prediction is that live streaming is going to be the number one thing. It's almost almost there. I mean, podcasting is it's just going to be like the people which are super creative 
uh, the Theo Vaughns. Who else can I see in a good podcast? Uh, perhaps Joe Rogan can continue with it, but you know, after a while, you start repeating the same things that you have already said so many times before. So that's why I think like live streaming is the way to go when it comes to content because there's so much content right now. And you can always look at something from a different perspective. But if you're interviewing people, then you're always going to have, you know, your talking points. Because from your perspective, it's hard to see the world through somebody else's eyes. So, yeah, um, that's how I view it. That So I think as every new thing comes to kind of like it's boring stage that's where podcasting is right now i think it's oversaturated like everyone is a podcaster right now uh, so yeah i think we're gonna move in a little more to just hanging out with people and just having a good time and you know maybe not having so much conversations maybe just watching people hang out but yeah it's true i agree that it's becoming a little bit repetitive like some of the episodes which he releases right now i don't even watch them i just watch a little bit and i'm just like but before i i could watch maybe what three four hours just watching a full joe rogan episode but now it isn't like that anymore doomed he loses sleep worrying about the end of times and civil war mm. and so when he tried to get on his moral high horse about social media ruining kids these days Cat pushed back straight away and offered what I thought was actually a pretty intelligent take. See, Cat had two main theories that he kept coming back to throughout the podcast. The first one was that information is king and it's the root of all human pursuit and human power. And the second one actually really resonated with me. It's this idea that everything in modern day society is just a cycle of history. And it made me think of Nietzsche's eternal return or the way I always understood it was the eternal recurrence. Mm. Basically, if you haven't heard of it, it's the idea that there are a finite amount of many possible physical configurations and that having a concept of the beginning of time is unscientific which means that the universe is eternal and every physical situation must continue recurring for eternity. Now, I know that sounds heaps lofty and what? highbrow, but I think that's kind of what Kat's trying to say here. It's almost like he's getting sick and tired of people thinking they've discovered something new when they really just fail to do the research and understand that this supposedly new phenomenon has been in existence for centuries or maybe even longer. So I'm going to play this. Yeah, I usually say history repeats until you learn the lesson so that is something which i really believe in so for instance if you do a mistake you're going to repeat that mistake until you learn your lesson and you actually take away whatever is causing that mistake in order to move forward so yeah i mean it plays a little bit into this but loki that picture is wild of cat this clip and show you exactly what I mean, but let me give you a little bit more context first. Okay. They were looking at ancient artworks and speculating about what they really mean, and Rogan was saying how there's a common thread amongst ancient civilizations all the way through to today, True. where we are constantly searching for meaning through a higher power, such as a god. And this is where Cat jumped in with his theory on information, which I think is kind of obvious. It's like saying people eat because they're hungry, but then he made a really good point about how nothing is really new as I was just explaining. Anyway, take a look and I'll pick it up straight after. But they're all kind of all saying the same thing. There's some higher power that comes mm. and gives you structure, tells you what to do and how to live. Information. Yes. Information. That's yep, what that's they it. give you. They give you information. Yeah. Every story, every civilization, yep. every time. Yep. But also humans individually are thirsty for information. We always want information. We want gossip, we want news, we want bullshit, we want science. There's so much information that people are just constantly consuming. This bullshit information like TikTok and nonsense that just passes you. But it's not really nonsense because I think information is just a mirror of ourselves. And that's what I'm starting to understand. That, I mean, even if you look in nature, and this was a truth bomb which Kat 
Williams said on the Joe Rogan podcast is that if you look in nature, for instance, you can see that there's evidence of a God because I can be a father and then I can have a son and my son can have a son. And if you even dig deeper, what makes it so like, why did God give us hunger so that we can eat? And why did God give us animals so we can eat or grass or this like there's a whole ecosystem right which is perfectly created for us any if you were to just move the moon a little bit or the sun a little bit it could be nuclear winter or like we'll burn alive so i find that very interesting that they were discussing that on the podcast and i agree 100 percent because like people have the discussion what came first the chicken or the egg but truthfully the fact that you're having the discussion means that proves that there is a God. Bye. Yeah, but none of that stuff is nonsense. Well, it's not all nonsense. What it is is it's just another something offshoot to, to get your attention. Right. Mm. Yeah. Which is what all of this is about. Mm -hmm. From the Roman Colosseums yep. to uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the Roman King Coliseums. Arthur's court time, like that's the first viral videos, right? <laughs> like that's, right, right. Like they would tell viral stories. Finally, podcast after podcast of Rogan saying the same thing over and over again about how social media is bad, TikTok is ruining the kids, and every single time his guests just nod their heads in agreement. But finally, Cat comes along and basically said, "Hey, you're no different. It's just an alternative way to express yourself." And this is exactly what bugs me about Rogan. I've said this so many times. He thinks that he's not part of the social media universe because he does long form conversations. Now, even though I agree with him about social media, you guys know that I only use YouTube, for example. I don't have Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, etc. But for some reason, Rogan thinks he's above all of that because he has a podcast. Mm. <laughs> the funny thing is, he's the first one to admit that he's just a comedian or he calls himself a meathead whenever he gets caught out for saying something completely wrong or inappropriate. You know, the whole, they're just conversations, we're just talking. He says it every time he says or does something controversial and he can't have it both ways. He can't say that he's having a real in-depth conversation to educate and inform the world. Then when things go wrong, hide behind the fact that he's a comedian and a UFC commentator. It reeks of hypocrisy. So it was refreshing to hear Kat say, hey, TikTok is no different. It's just another form of expression and it's just as necessary as anything else. There's nothing new here which I agree with, even though I don't value it as much as listening to JRE, for example. But that whole interaction also reminded me of when Jimmy Carr was on JRE and he said that stand-up comedy, get this, is a new medium and that modern day comics are pioneers. Look around. If you're making a living as a stand-up comic, congratulations, you made it. Mm -hmm. It's all incredible. The idea that we're literally living off our wits. Yes. It's and how few of us there are. I mean, there's, there's no one doing this. That's why I think it's like virgin territory. So at the end of it, I actually really enjoyed the conversation between Rogan and Cat Williams, even though it got boring at times. Mm. There were a bunch of things Joe discussed that we've all heard a million times. And it became pretty clear that Cat played the whole thing out at the beginning of the year to promote his upcoming live comedy special on Netflix coming out in May. In the space of two long-form podcasts, he's put himself on the front page, he's sold out shows, and he's going to get a massive turnout for his live special. So credit to him, he's got our attention. I honestly don't mind the guy, even if he thinks he read 100 books a week when he was 10 years old. Anyway, if you haven't seen the full episode, you should go and check it out. It's available right here on YouTube. Yeah, but and that's where we're going to stop it. Uh, go in, like, comment, and subscribe to podcast cringe because i really like this channel and honestly i like the fact that he is creating new a new form of content like there is there's people which do like breakdowns of like music videos but this is the first time i've seen a youtuber which is breaking down podcasts so i watch a lot of these videos nowadays just you know to to fill me in a little bit when it comes to certain content creators because you can't watch it's too much content which is getting created right now and it's good sometimes just to watch a little bit and just see okay is it something i should check out if you guys want to check out the episode you can but 
if I'm being 100% honest, I would not recommend that episode. It was just super boring. Uh, there was just nothing there. I, I really liked the Shannon Sharp uh, interview because it felt like Cat Williams was a machine gun there and was just shooting everybody, just going for everybody's heads. But in this episode, it kind of felt like Joe Rogan wasn't even challenging him. They were like tippy toeing a little bit on each other's toes. And it's like, you're there to laugh. You're there to be entertained. And when I watched the Shannon Sharp interview, I was, I was very entertained because him calling people fat and just like going in on people. That's, that's what you want to see from Cat Williams. You don't want to see him, I don't know, being like super... I don't even know what he was there. It was like super weird to see him just, I don't know, a shell of himself because he felt a little uncomfortable. And I think this is the good thing about Shannon Sharp. He has a very, very unique talent where he can actually make you talk and make you feel comfortable enough where you're like, okay, he's kind of like your friend. He's kind of like your sidekick. And he's egging you on, but then you you get a little more confidence to actually say what you believe, right? So, uh, yeah, leave in the comment section, like, comment, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.